19th century Harvard professor Benjamin Pierce said of Euler's uh, theorem, a theorem that he spent most of his life trying to solve it, is the most beautiful thing that I have ever seen. I don't know what it means. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but it can be solved. And in being solved, it shows an empirical truth about mathematics. The philosophy of mathematics does more than just try to show this 2 plus 2 equal 4. The philosophy of mathematics delves deeper into the problems that humans are trying to cope with. Uh, three main points are recently C.A. Pickerman chronicled in the math book that math is more than just numbers and equations. Math is about solving the impossible in human endeavors. Throughout my speech, we will ask ourselves three main questions. The first question we will ask ourselves is, can math have aesthetic beauty? The second question that we will ask ourselves as philosophers is, can math solve the problems about the infinite and beyond? And the final question that we will ask ourselves as philosophers is, can math solve human emotion? And can math actually predict human outcomes? In 1773, Leonard Euler proposed in the Fundamentals of Differential Calculus the idea of something called the Euler's number. It is a number which, in, in essence, helps us do compounding interest. It shows that uh, numbers can have a continuous outcome. And the equation that he proposed is this, Euler's identity. And it is what many philosophers and mathematicians consider to be one of the most beautiful things they have ever seen. In part because it's so contradictory. Euler's number is a number that has no ending. It is a number that cannot be divided by anything. It is a number that just goes on and on forever. In addition, it is multiplied by an imaginary number, a number which does not exist, a number which we cannot see. And it is also multiplied by pi, again, a number that has no ending, a number that just keeps going on and on and on. As of 2008, mathematicians have calculated pi to 1.2 trillion numbers. And as time goes on, it'll still go on and on. And yet, when you multiply these numbers together and you add it to 1, the outcome is 0. It can mathematically be proven, yet we have these contradictory ideas. We have numbers without end, numbers which are imaginary, added by the simplest binary number system, and our solution is 0, a number which most people didn't even know about until the Mayans uh, calculated it in about 700 AD. The next thing we will look at in showing mathematics having aesthetic beauty is some of the in neat and interesting things that it can show. For example, Goldbach's conjecture, which shows that any number greater than 5, when added together by three prime numbers, numbers which are not divisible by anything but one in itself, can get the solution. In addition to that, you can take any number greater than 5, added by a prime number and multiplied by two prime numbers, and also get the solution. It shows us that prime numbers, even though they cannot be multiplied or are not the factor of anything but one itself, are in fact the basis of every number in the integer system. Mathematics can do more than just showing us the beauty in things. Mathematics can also show us how infinite things can be solved, how things that we cannot see can actually be predicted quite easily. So math at the infinites, something that has been going on since about 400 BC. There was a philosopher named Zeno. And Zeno uh, was articulated in Aristotle's uh, physics that if you were to take any distance, and if you were to walk to that distance, the first thing you would have to do is walk to half that distance. But before you could walk to half that distance, you would again have to walk to half that distance, so on and so forth. And the question that Zeno poses, is it possible to go anywhere? Because if you have to go half the distance to anywhere, you can do that an infinite amount of times, showing that it is not possible to go anywhere. 
This is a question that surprisingly has plagued philosophers for almost two millennia. And it wasn't until the 1700s that a man by the name of Kurt Gödel tried to solve it. He looked at the number one-third, which is in decimal form three, going on infinite, and he multiplied that by three. And what he got was one is equal to nine with a little bar over it. So he got this little contradictory idea that one is not equal to one. One can actually be equal to a decimal that goes on and on forever. And how he tried to solve that in his incompleteness theorem is to show that there are other decimals and other fractions. Take, for example, one divided by seven, which you get the decimal one, four, two, eight, five, seven repeating. And when you multiply that by seven, you also get nine going on forever. So mathematically, he proved that one can equal more than just one. It can equal the decimal nine repeating. And in doing so, he proved that infinite while theoretical in nature, actually can be logically proven and can actually be something you can observe. In addition to proving mathematics and just uh, showing the infinite series, mathematics also has uh, important things that it can do with things that we observe. If you're a fan of baseball or if you're a fan of politics, a man by the name of Nate Silver, who was a baseball guy working for a baseball prospectus came up with something called CODA. It's the player empirical it's, it's a, an algorithm that he used to figure out when baseball players will start to decline in their numbers. And he used this algorithm to basically prove what you should be able to pay baseball players, how you should put baseball players onto their team. In 2008, uh, guys working on Moneyball wrote a book, and it was turned into a movie. And many of Nate Silver's ideas were used in Moneyball. And in fact, the Boston Red Sox, the Chicago White Sox, used the ideas in Nate Silver's Pakoda theorem to actually prove that you can predict when players will start to decline. The more interesting thing that Nate Silver did is he created a website for the New York Times called 538.org. In 538.org, what he did was he took his algorithm and he used it to predict presidential politics and advance the polling ideas. In 2008, he was able to predict 49 of the 50 states. In addition, he was also able to predict all 35 of the Senate outcomes. He was named 2009's Time Man of the Year, and his algorithm has gone on to do massive things in the field of predicting human nature. So we have now asked three questions in the philosophy of mathematics. And while we, not, we may not have the greatest answers, the one good thing about mathematics is it shows that there's more to math than just 2 plus 2 equals 4. Mathematics can ask the questions, is there aesthetic beauty in nature besides what you can see? Can mathematics produce infinite series? And can mathematics produce the answers to, can human nature be predicted? And I think the answer to all of these is yes. 